JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 25th. I am Harald Ambos Pistoros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed against the other G10 currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian, the Asian session Thursday. It gained against JPY and slightly versus Euro and CHF, while it underperformed against NOC and CAT. The greenback was found virtually unchanged versus GBP, AUD, NZD, and SEC. Despite the relative weakness of the safe havens yen and franc, the failure of the risk-linked Aussie and uh, Kiwi to capitalize against uh, their US counterpart paints a blurry picture with regards to the broader market sentiment. Yes, the oil-linked Crown and Looney were the gainers, but that was due to an individual story related to oil. In order to get a clearer picture with regards to risk appetite, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, most major EU indices closed slightly in the green, perhaps as Eurozone's preliminary PMIs showed a return into expansion during the month of March. That said, appetite softened during the US session, with Nasdaq losing the most among Wall Street's uh, main uh, indices. Sentiment improved again somewhat during the Asian session today. Although China, Shanghai Composite and Hong Kong's Hang Seng slid fractionally, Japan's Nikkei 225 and South Korea's KEOSPI gained 1.14 and 0.40% respectively. In our view, the rise of Eurozone's Composite PMI above the boom or bust zone of 50 is unlikely to keep European equity supported for long. We believe that the third wave of coronavirus infections across the continent the fresh lockdowns and the slow vaccination process are likely to result in uh, downside revisions in the final uh, numbers and perhaps softer prints for the month of April. In the US, Powell and the Yellen reiterated their optimism over an economic recovery before the House uh, Financial Services Committee, but, the fa but uh, that failed to provide any support to Wall Street as uh, it seems investors remained uh, worried uh, due to Yellen's uh, remarks on Tuesday over tax increases in order to finance the new public investments. With all that in mind, we stick to our guns uh, that uh, fears of a slower uh, that fears of a slower economic recovery in Europe and concerns over tax increases in the US may keep risk appetite subdued for longer than we have uh, previously assumed. That said, we still believe that this is a corrective phase. With uh, most major central banks uh, pledged to keep their respective monetary policies extra loose and projecting that any inflation spikes in the months to come are likely to prove to be temporary, we do see the case for the prevailing uptrends in equities to resume at some point in the foreseeable future. Now moving into the energy market, uh, oil prices edged uh, north yesterday after a ship ran aground in the Suez Canal, raising concerns that uh, the incident could uh, tie up crude shipments. That said, we see this as a temporary supportive uh, factor for oil prices and we believe that uh, growing concerns about global demand due to rising COVID cases may result in another round of selling. Thus, we see the case for oil prices to continue, to continue correcting south uh, for, a for a while more. Nonetheless, we don't expect the current correction to last for long, as the persistent demand concerns may increase the chances for OPEC and Italy to roll over their current supply curbs into May. This and, potential, and a potential improvement in market sentiment in the foreseeable future may bring an end uh, to, to the corrective phase in, um, in oil prices. Now, as for today's events, during the European morning, we have a central bank deciding on monetary policy, and this is the SNB, the Swiss National Bank. 
The, la the last gathering of this bank, w of this bank was um, back in December, which resulted in no fireworks. The bank kept its policy unchanged, reiterating that the Swiss franc remains highly valued and that they are willing to intervene more strongly in the FX market. Given the latest surge in bond yields around the world, we don't believe that the SNB will risk sounding less dovish, as this may result in a stronger franc, something uh, that they don't want to. Thus, we expect uh, policymakers to keep policy steady and maintain their willingness to intervene when deemed necessary. Later in the day, we have the final US GDP for the fourth quarter, which is just expected to confirm its second estimate of 4.1% quarter over quarter seasonally adjusted uh, annual rate. We will also get to hear from ECB President Christine Lagarde, Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey and Bank of Canada Governor Tiff uh, Macklem, who will speak um, at a four-day conference which is uh, organized by the Bank of International Settlements. Although the topic will be on innovation in the digital age, we believe that once again market participants may be on the lookout, on the lookout for comments on the searching yields. That said, the only official we expect to sound worried on the matter is ECB President Lagarde. The Bank of England and the Bank of Canada share the relaxed views of the Fed on the matter. Thus, following the ECB's decision to accelerate its, pa its pandemic emergency purchase program at its uh, latest gathering, most of the attention may fall on Lagarde for any hints with regards to whether she and her colleagues are considering more action in order to stop any unwarranted uh, rise in debt financing costs. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT just fair and direct.